Can you tell the last special costume for you? No. Keep you wearing one of the white dresses. Carnival Sunday night really is people are ripe and ready for it, you know, with all the costumes being so on. People, usually nobody sleeps in Carnival uh, Sunday night. <laughs> Just round the corner, steel band popping, popping, popping in my heart, beating, beating, beating in my blood. Everybody whining up, jumping, jumping, jumping up, bottom to bottom, breast to chest, belly to belly, hands up, down, sideways, hands all over the place, and people sweating, sweating for so, waiting, waiting waiting for six o'clock and when the cock crow on Laventil Hill and church bell ring out, ring, ring, ringing out, Juve, break away. We move out on the road and pan sweet, sweet, I'm telling you. Everything shaking, shaking, shaking with the rhythm, Juve. Juve is the first day of carnival in the West Indies. Over the past 20 years, a Caribbean-style carnival has grown up in West London. From a small community initiative, it's grown to become the largest street festival in Europe. In the process, it has come to involve many of the community organisations who are active in the area. Paddington Print Shop is one of these organisations. The Print Shop is a non-profit making visual arts organisation. We work with individuals, with people from voluntary organisations and with artists, with anyone who wants to express their ideas through print. We provide training and access to resources. Every year we become involved in the carnival bands, helping them to print t-shirts and posters and to prepare designs for fabric that will go into the costumes. Sometimes we set up special projects in order to encourage people to use print in new and interesting ways. Chuve is one of these projects. The project aims to encourage artists who work in all kinds of media, in painting, in sculpture and in costume making, to use print in order to communicate their ideas and also to encourage people to buy work which they can take back into their own home. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to some of the ideas and people behind the Juve project. The way I see the Juve project is a marvelous opportunity for artists all over England 
to get involved in something that I consider to be a very, very important and significant event, say carnival. Carnival in Notting Hill has actually would given the inspiration to various artists to get involved with something that I think is very, um, very fundamental and primal. Because do you know the word juve actually is from, um, is patois for jus ouvert, which has to do with the early stages of carnival in Trinidad. For me, juve is to do with using carnival as an inspiration. All artists using carnival as an inspiration to produce artwork. The thing about the print project and working within the medium of print is that it really is an extension of the work that one does within Carnival. When working in Carnival, one covers a number of different media. You're dealing with sculptural forms, colour forms, issues of scale, um, issues of costuming and textiles. To therefore bring that work and that aspect into a print project um, is a continuation of it because I mean we use print in, in the work that we did at Yar printing costumes with silkscreen prints. Um, again it's the issue that I find just to take a carnival costume out of context and place it in a gallery is devoid of meaning because it existed on the street and with a wearer and with a dance aspect to it. Whereas putting material that has come from carnival through another form into a print project I think makes a lot of sense. So I've been working here basically from photographic images of a carnival band that I did with Batty Mamzelle a few years ago. Um, the costume is called I Have a Mind and it's about the black experience once more. Expressing issues to deal with black inventors, black science, um, black literature and arts that normally is something that's not mentioned a great deal in um, a history that's dealt with by emission. And I think through Carnival one is able to visualize things in a solid form, in a real form. And again, with the costume aspects of apartheid, it's obviously dealing with the issues of apartheid and the image of a, an African woman overpowered by two towering white figures. But it's also showing an awareness of it, an understanding of it, and, and a way to see through it. Originally, Juve was called Spirit of the Carnival. And it just so happened that I had a painting with that same title, a, a painting which um, I'd done since 1983. Um, the painting itself was in fact started off as a, a rough on my bedroom wall. But in fact what I ended up with was a, was a painting that was a lot more spontaneous than anything I'd ever done before. So um, it stayed in, in this rough form, or in fact it's as I said, bits of brown paper stuck roughly together, uh, painted in a very loose manner. But the feeling was right. The painting itself was inspired by uh, events at Notting Hill Carnival. To cut a long story short, various attempts have been made to ban the carnival. Now, the painting shows this by uh, depicting a, what I, for me is a typical African figure which I can well remember from uh, my home days in uh, Dominica. This is uh, way back in 1955 when people used to play mass at Carnival. Much of it was very much inspired by um, the sort of ceremonies and initiation ceremonies and so on that take place in West Africa. People did used to dress in long grasses and so on, have horns and so on, and you couldn't see their faces. And this image stuck in mind in my mind. So what I wanted was to show this spiritual figure, in fact, surrounded by a sea of police trying to barricade this figure in. Okay. But in fact, the, because it's a spiritual figure, in fact, it can't be contained. And it's a fighting spirit as well, not a spirit that easily uh, succumbs to, to pressure. So you can say that this figure represents more the Afro Caribbean community in London. They're always under some kind of pressure and they, they will not submit. My ideas have always had a political slant and I think that discovering the woodcut as a medium helped me um, because it's a very physical kind of process and I found that the 
anger that I felt about many of the things that go on in the world, I could actually respond to in terms of the cutting itself. Um, the gestures, um, the actual cuts that you have to make um, are very significant. Uh, they tear into the wood uh, and this is really quite exciting in its own, in its own right. The black and white image here is an attempt, it's called Black Rain. It's an attempt to get the kind of atmosphere that must have existed on the day that the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The three figures walking along um, with their arms outstretched because they were blinded, um, with their skin hanging off because this is what in fact had happened, um, and with patterns on their skin because if you had a flower dress on on the day then obviously your clothes were burnt off but the patterns still remained on the skin of your body if you had any skin left on. The hair apparently stood on end. Um, it stood on end for a long long time. This image goes over into many of my other images. This in fact is a silk screen and it's very, very different to woodcutting. Here, instead of this dramatic black-white, instead of the tearing and cutting, silkscreen has a kind of delicacy about it, which is to do with the build-up of layers of ink, layers of texture. It's called the first slow steps of a dance. Um, and it was done at Paddington uh, in response to the Jouvet project, the carnival element I hope to, to get in. The carnival element that I wanted to try to get across was the dance of life, uh, not just any one particular carnival. I felt that carnival obviously has a worldwide connotation, it's a very historical kind of element which humans use um, to brighten their lives every so on. It has a very ritualistic kind of significance. Um, and I wanted to get, in some ways, the sinister quality of it, and yet the release that Carnival actually produces in human beings. <laughs> Normally you see people during carnival time jumping up and having a good time and all the rest of it and it looks like a great a mammoth, a mega, mega sort of party. But that is just, that's the superficial aspect of carnival. Below that level there is something that is almost primal in terms of the need for human, for, for human beings to find um, an expression. When I put my hands up like that, I want you to sort of jab, jab, all right? You can have a, little bit, have a bit of a rehearsal. Just to make sure that you shout good and loud. Because you've got to get in the rhythm, all right? Jab, jab, jab. That's not good enough, buddy. Come on. The print that I produced um, for the print shop, for the print project, is um, to do with uh, the Devils and Demons band. And there are two main characters in there. It was uh, Jab Malassi and also Jab Jab. Um, he, he's a buffoon, he's a bit of a clown. And um, we must remember that, in fact, the, that's one of the characters in Carnival that has, that has come down way back from, from uh, Roman times, even. That's one character that has survived. Black face and white face mask, arms, silken hair, Rips flash, cracked like gunshots. We are the boys, jab, jab, from Pfizer Bad. Jab, jab, we afraid nobody. Jab, jab, we big and bad. Jab, jab, we looking for trouble. Jab, jab, in Port of Spain. Jab, jab, we ready and able. Jab, jab, we ready and able. Jab, jab, so think again. Jab, jab, if you want to fight. The life and death. In, um, instinct um, is is really it is really expressed in carnival originally that's what it that's what it was about because it had to do with with winter and it had to do with spring and incidentally winter has always been expressed in festivities as, as a demon 
the devil has a white face. We've always considered devils having a white face. The masters were, were, were all Europeans, and um, and it's and also the other thing too. Often we bought um, we we, we man, the, the masks we wore were manufactured not in Trinidad. We were ma manufactured elsewhere, and strange strangely enough, they had European features, which is quite odd. Jab, jab. I'm interested in preserving, if you like, um, something of the carnival that I knew when I was when, when I was a child. But and because it scared me so much, I think there is something in it that appeals to me. And in any case, it's, 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 it has color. Carnival is is, is is thing of an explosion of color, and I love using color. The great difficulty with the printmaking I found was being presented with a blank sheet of paper on which um, uh, something has to be put down. It, it, I'm much more engaged with the painting and whatever I put there leads me to make decisions that I, I keep thinking anyway. I haven't made before, whereas with the print I have to make a decision um, uh, prior to uh, um, the, the fun bit, you know, I mean, trying to, you know, like getting, getting on it. I have to make some decisions, like, uh, you know, sort of divide up the screen in, in, um, in a certain way to get from edge to edge because of the scale. Whereas with my painting, I mean, I just get on it and, um, you know, I'm sort of doing, uh, it seems to me, what comes naturally. Whereas with the print, it's, it's not quite natural, or not yet anyway. I love to work fast and I love to work with colour. I was very attracted to silkscreen because of all the large areas of colour you could use. But I didn't like the inhibiting, rather slow process of making stencils, which also gives you a very hard edge to everything. I think every single day I'm assimilating knowledge and use all the information I need for my work. And so I think that every day I'm thinking about my work, but when I actually get to the painting of it, the making of it, I don't want to think at all, I want to do it as quickly as possible. So I evolved this process, a printing, which uses the bright colours, but in fact is more like a painting. And I mix all the colours I need, have my ideas that I've formulated before, have them in my head, ready. I've done all the thinking, all the preparing first, and when I actually start the print, I have about five minutes in which to work and then everything has to happen in those five minutes and that burst of energy is what gives my work, I hope, gives it that energy, visual energy. So I have about 16 colours mixed, I'm ready, poised over the screen and then quickly I'll paint the whole thing, the whole image as I've worked it out in my head, pull it through onto the paper and then it's finished, I don't touch it, I can't think about the process while I'm doing it, I can't retouch it like you would with a painting and I end up with what I like, is a very thin, flat area of bright colour. I like to think my own work is a a celebration of all my sensations. I don't think it's just about what you see, it's not just about looking at my work. I would really like it if, if you looked at one of my paintings, you then could hear things or smell things or feel things. My work comes from the things I do, things I've done, things I'd like to have done, sensations I've experienced, food I've eaten, things I've drunk, where I've been, who I've been with, everything. And I'd like to I think that actually comes through as well as just the visual experience. The work that one produces within Carnival is never seen in isolation. I mean, the mass camp is a hive of activity, a place where things are discussed, um, food is eaten. I mean, there's always food there. It's a social centre, and the artist is not there as sort of artist as God, but is there as a contributor with everybody else to producing one piece of work. 
for the majority of people that work within Carnival, it exists for them all the year round. It exists, they live and breathe Carnival, especially in Trinidad. I mean, it's there all the time. However, I think there's, people over here see it as a limited thing that happens once a year, one day, and that's it. The opportunity, therefore, of producing stuff that can exist all the year round, having Carnival designers working within this context provides an opportunity for them to dismiss those stereotypes and produce images that to them are more real and more representative of the activity that they're involved in. When I was in Trinidad, um, I remember on Ash Wednesday, people were already going into, into libraries actually doing research for next year's carnival. That's, that's how committed some people are. It provides an opportunity for people to get involved, to become creative in in a very, very basic way. If you experience Trinidad Carnival, and even the Notting Hill one, you'll know what I'm talking about, because it's there, it's there to be seen. They sing, they dance, they move, they... it's fantastic. I think that everybody should have a carnival, absolutely every nation should have a carnival. In fact, not only nation, but every carnival should not only be in, in Notting Hill or in Trinidad, but on that particular day, carnival should be everywhere, everywhere. In fact, why not have a carnival every day? <laughs> <laughs>